I would be the first to twitch my finger at you if you told me you were still printing hard copies of emails and calendars. We should be paperless, but the lofty goal of becoming a paperless society kind of withered a long time ago. Sure, eventually we'll get there, I think, but at the moment, while we are all embracing the cloud and mobile and wireless, we still use an awful lot of paper. Sometimes we're even required to, not because of ourselves, but because others don't have electronic communications available. Although we may not think about it often, all of our items in Outlook can be printed. This includes emails, contacts, task lists, and yes, even calendars. As a matter of fact, calendars are one of the most interesting because they can be printed in so many different ways. Let's go ahead and take a look. First, we need to select the Outlook module that we want to print. We're going to go ahead and choose the calendar by simply clicking or tapping on that option at the bottom of the screen. Once that's selected, because Outlook is a Microsoft Office product, we can use any method we normally would, including going to the File tab and choosing Print, or what I'm going to do, which is just press the keyboard shortcut, Control p for Print. This does the same thing as clicking on all of those tabs. Now, all of the regular things that we normally need to do to print are still there, like selecting the printer. But because this is Outlook, there are a couple of unique features. For the calendar specifically, we want to take a look at the settings group because there are different styles. If we click or tap on these, we can actually see the preview on the right side of the screen. We can do a daily style, which is very detailed, includes mini calendars and can even include our task list. We can do a weekly agenda style, or a weekly calendar style. Probably the one that I use most, just because of the nature of what I do, is the monthly style, which prints a simple monthly calendar. There is not a lot of room for details with the monthly calendar, you may notice. There's a unique trifold style. This gives us a specific day in the left column, our task list in the center, and an actual weekly calendar on the right-hand side. You may also notice if you look all the way at the bottom of the screen, though, that this one takes up a lot of room, basically one page for each day, which is going to be roughly 30 pages or so. Then there's also one called the calendar detail style. This one is more of a text-based style, but it does give us a lot of room. There's really no right or wrong. We simply need to know what it is that we want to see and how we want it to print. If we've already configured our printing options, we can simply select the one that we want, select the printer, and then simply click or tap the print option. But the first time we set it up, we probably want to click or tap the print options. This displays a dialog with a few different options in it. At the top, of course, we can select our printer and the printer properties. Then we have the option to choose which calendar we want to print if we have more than one. We can choose the print style from here as well. And on the right-hand side, we can choose things like the number of pages, the number of copies, and whether they should be collated. Probably most importantly is at the bottom, where we actually select the print range. Do we want to print a single month or multiple months? We're able to select whichever one is most appropriate. In this case, we'll go ahead and choose from the 1st of February through the end of March. If we have selected the private option, which is available on everything we create in Outlook, yes, even calendar items, but also emails and tasks and contacts, then we can choose to hide details of private appointments so those don't actually show. This would be important if we were going to give this hard copy to somebody else. For example, if you didn't want your mother to know that you had an appointment with a lawyer, mark that as private and not have the details be displayed on the printed copy you may give to her as you go on vacation or just want to let her know what you're doing for the month. So here we do have a lot of details, but initially, the first time we print, we really need to make sure that we go into the page setup option which is right about in the middle of the window. This is where we get into all of the details. First of all, we can choose the type of layout, and this will vary depending on what we're actually printing. In this case, it asks if we want one page per month or two pages per month. We can then choose if we want to show a task list. And if so, should it be the daily task list or our to-do list? Do we want to include a notes area? Should it be blank or should it be lined? We can only choose to print work days, which is perfect for a work schedule, and we can choose to print exactly one month per page. On the right side, we can work with all of the various fonts for headings, appointments, and shading. The most interesting part, though, about calendars is the tab at the top called Paper. This is where we can choose, of course, letter versus legal. 
But more importantly, for those of you who may still be holding on to those day timers and day runners, we have all kinds of different sizes for those over here as well. For example, a pocket planner, which are the little skinny narrow ones. If we scroll down, we'll see that we do even have some day timer and some day runner options as well. By selecting these, it will print to exactly the right size, which you can then trim and punch to fit in your standard planners. In our case, we're not going to do that. We're going to put it back to letter. If you are so inclined, you can also set a header or footer. For example, you could say that this is your calendar or a particular date and time. By default, it has the username, the page number, and the date printed, which can be helpful to know what the latest hard copy is. When we're finished though, we'll click or tap OK. Then we have the option to either send it directly to the printer or to preview. Obviously, we want to see what this is going to look like, so we're going to choose Preview. There's our calendar as it is configured. If everything is good to go, we simply go to the upper left-hand side of the screen and click Print to send our hard copy off to the printer that we can then distribute or do with what we need. So in some ways, printing things from Outlook is just like printing anything else, but there is a lot of detail. The reason, though, is because there are so many different ways people want to print hard copies of Outlook information. Remember that if we take a little bit of time to set them up initially, we probably can just use the print option from the initial backstage view. But the good news is we do have a lot of available options to get our important Outlook information like contact lists and task lists to print as well. It's not limited to just the calendar. Contacts have a similar number of options as far as the layout and what details we want and how the layout of information should be. Tasks are fairly simple. They're just a table style with no other options. I strongly urge us all to work electronically if we can, just because it saves some trees and because things update so frequently, we'd be constantly printing out new pages. But if we need a hard copy, for whatever reason, they are certainly available for all of our Outlook items.